your Peloton bike is finally here. Now, let's get ready to ride. The bike and bike package are extremely heavy and require more than one person to lift or carry. Lifting heavy objects can cause muscle strain and back injuries. Use lifting aids and proper lifting techniques when moving or assembling the Peloton bike. Make sure to read all warnings and instructions in the Peloton Bike Home Assembly Guide before beginning to assemble the Peloton bike. Follow all instructions as given. Peloton is not responsible for damage, injury, or equipment failure caused by improper assembly or use. Read the location requirements in the Bike User Manual. Try to assemble the bike in the same place you're planning to use it. This way, you won't have to move it after it's assembled. Clear about 5 feet by 5 feet of solid, level space for the assembly. And make sure you have a pair of scissors handy. You'll need them later on. We also recommend having a second person assist with assembly. So grab a workout buddy, close friend, or adult family member to help you along the way. Open the outer carton and find the bike carton, the touchscreen box, and the home assembly kit. Clear away cardboard packaging materials, but leave the unfolded outer carton under the bike. It will protect the bike and your floor during the assembly process. Do you have those scissors handy? Use them to cut the three plastic straps on the bike carton. The top should slide off easily. Set aside the user manual and the accessory boxes A, B, and C. Remove the plastic covering the bike frame. Clip the zip ties on the frame and take out the handlebars and monitor arm. Clear away any packaging material from around the bike. Before you start assembling, find and identify all parts and tools. Unwrap the handlebars and monitor arm. In the home assembly kit, find the bike home assembly guide. Cardboard stabilizer insert. Hardware bags one, two, and three, and your home assembly tools. The tools are a pedal wrench, a long 5mm Allen wrench, and a long 3mm Allen wrench. Hardware bag 1 includes 8 bolts A, 2 bolts B, and 2 washers C. Hardware bag 2 includes 2 bolts D, 2 washers C, 1 bolt E, and 4 bolts F. Hardware bag 3 includes 4 bolts J with washers. Now, let's open these boxes. In box A, find the front stabilizer and the weight holder kit. In box B, find the rear stabilizer and the handlebar post. In box C, find two water bottle holders, the left and right pedals, and the standard tool kit and hardware bag. The hardware bag contains the same bolts and washers as bags 1 and 2 from the home assembly kit. You won't need these unless something goes missing. The standard tool kit includes a 6mm Allen wrench with Phillips head screwdriver, 5, 4, and 3mm Allen wrenches, a hex multi-tool, a 15mm combination wrench, and a fastener strap. These are all the tools you will need to assemble the bike, but some steps are easier with the tools from the home assembly kit, so we'll let you know when you need those. Make sure the seat and handlebar L handles point straight down. If a handle sticks out to the side, pull it out and rotate it to point down. Fit the cardboard stabilizer insert onto the frame. It needs to sit flush against the flywheel. You may need a second person to assist you for this next step. Slowly lower the bike onto its side, making sure the stabilizer insert stays in place and rests flat against the floor. Remove the curtain base from the bike. Find the front stabilizer. It's the one with wheels. Fit the stabilizer tightly against the front foot of the bike. Make sure the feet point away from the bike frame. Screw in four bolts A from hardware bag one using the six millimeter Allen wrench. Make sure all bolts are fully tightened. Fit the rear stabilizer against the back foot of the bike. Screw in the remaining four bolts A with the six millimeter Allen wrench. Shake both stabilizers to make sure they're secure. If there's any movement, tighten each bolt again. For more leverage, try using the short end of the Allen wrench to tighten the bolts. Carefully set the bike upright. If you're feeling motivated, you can lift it yourself. 
Otherwise, we recommend having your helper assist you. Fit the handlebar post onto the handlebar base. Make sure the letters on the post will be right side up when the handlebars are upright. Add two bolts B and two washers C to the front of the post. Hardware bag one should be empty now. Screw them in using a 5mm Allen wrench. We recommend using the long one from the home assembly kit, not the short one from the standard toolkit. Open hardware bag two and add two bolts D and two washers C to the sides of the post. Screw them in using a 5mm Allen wrench. Loosen the handlebar L handle. Fit the handlebar post into the head tube. Let it sit in its lowest position. If you have trouble getting the handlebar post in, a plastic clip inside the head tube might be getting in the way. Reach down and press both sides of the clip flat against the front of the head tube. Add bolt E to the end of the handlebar post. Screw it in using a Phillips head screwdriver. Tighten the L handle and try wiggling the handlebars. Then move the handlebar post to its highest position and try again. Any movement could mean that the bolts aren't tight enough. Double check and tighten each bolt again. Fit one water bottle holder against the front shroud. They're the same, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Add two bolts F and screw them in with the long 3mm Allen wrench from the home assembly kit. You can access the bolts through the holes on the opposite side of the water bottle holder. Attach the second water bottle holder to the other side with the 3mm Allen wrench and the two remaining bolts F. Before installing the pedals, make sure you know which one is which. Trust us, this part is very important. The right one is marked R and the left one is marked L. The left pedal screws in counterclockwise, so you won't be able to screw them in if they get mixed up. Rotate the crank arms so that they're both horizontal. Then turn the resistance knob all the way clockwise to lock the flywheel. Insert the right pedal into the right crank arm at a 90 degree angle. You might need to turn it slightly counterclockwise to seat it. Then turn it at least four full rotations clockwise by hand. Now insert the left pedal at a 90 degree angle. You may need to turn it slightly clockwise to seat it. Then turn it at least four full rotations counterclockwise by hand. Once both pedals are hand tight, tighten them again using the pedal wrench from the home assembly kit. Remember to rotate the wrench toward the front of the bike on both sides. Make sure the L handle under the seat points straight down. If it sticks out sideways, Pull it out and rotate it down. Find four bolts G, four flat washers H, and four spring washers I in the weight holder hardware bag. On each bolt, add a spring washer and then a flat washer. Identify the right and left weight holders. The right one is marked R and the left one is marked L. Hold the right weight holder against the right side of the seat slider. Screw in two bolts with washers using the four millimeter Allen wrench. Add the left weight holder using the 4mm Allen wrench and the remaining two bolts with washers. Try wiggling the weight holders to make sure they're secure. Any movement means you still need to fully tighten the bolts. And now you're ready for the big screen. Open the touchscreen box and take out the touchscreen, the touchscreen hardware bag, and the bike power supply and cord. The hardware bag contains the same four bolts J with washers as hardware bag 3 from the home assembly kit. It doesn't matter which set you use. Carefully lay the touchscreen face down on the cardboard and remove the back panel. Set the mounting plate perpendicular to the monitor arm. If the plate won't turn, snap the plastic caps off the mounting plate hinge. Use the hex multi-tool to hold the nut in place and the 6mm Allen wrench to turn the bolt about a half turn counterclockwise. The hinge should move, but still be stiff enough to hold up the touchscreen. If it still won't move, try loosening it another half turn. Make sure to snap the plastic caps back onto the hinge when you're done. Line up the plate with the holes on the back of the touchscreen. Use four bolts J with washers and your Phillips head screwdriver to secure the touchscreen to the plate. You can use the ones in hardware bag three 
or the ones from the touchscreen box, it doesn't matter which. Snap the back panel in again. Tilt the touchscreen forward. If you don't, it could get stuck behind the handlebars. Push the end of the monitor arm all the way into the handlebar base. Make sure the touchscreen is fully upright. Use your 6mm Allen wrench to tighten the bolt on the handlebar base. Tilt the touchscreen forward and back to check for wobble between the touchscreen and mounting plate. If there is any movement, tighten each bolt again. Find the monitor cable at the left of the flywheel. Open the plastic clamp at the back of the touchscreen. You may need to use some force. Insert the power connector into the right port and the data connector into the left one. Using the fastener strap, secure the monitor cable to the monitor arm. Make sure there's enough slack on both sides to raise the handlebars to their highest position and to tilt the touchscreen up and down. You're almost done. Tilt the bike onto the front wheels to slide the carton out from under it. Gently push the seat and handlebars from side to side to see if the bike rocks or wobbles. If the bike isn't stable, check the four leveling feet, the outer two feet on each stabilizer. If any foot doesn't rest firmly on the floor, turn it clockwise to lower it. Then, use a 15mm wrench to tighten the nut on each foot. You're all set. But before you do anything else, check the bike user manual for setup instructions, especially before plugging it in or adjusting the seat. Welcome to the Peloton community.